Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is that you're joining me for this video. Thanks once again for clicking on the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review channel. The subject of today's video is the Noodler's Ink Triple Tail Fountain Pen. Before I get started, I want to encourage you to stick around for the whole video because I'm going to run a giveaway during the review. So if you want to take part in the giveaway, you're stuck with me for the entire video. Also, if you're digging this awesome t-shirt, they are available exclusively on inkjournal.com. The link will be in the description below. Lastly, don't forget to check out the Penboy Roy Pentertainment Podcast, available on your favorite podcasting app. Just be forewarned, it's not for children. You have been warned. The Noodler's Ink brand is a brand that pretty much anyone that has any level of familiarity with fountain pens knows of. The brand has become so dominant in the fountain pen industry that almost anyone and everyone I know who are fountain pen enthusiasts had or has a product from Noodler's Ink in some form or another, be it a bottle of ink or a butthole smelling pen. The owner and founder of the brand is a man that goes by the name of Nathan Tardif. Nathan began his fountain pen journey when he was just a young man. He found himself taking fountain pens and mixing and matching parts of otherwise useless pens to make fully functional fountain pens, thereby sparing the world from the senseless loss of a fountain pen. As time passed, good old Nate developed two philosophies regarding the world of fountain pens that I find key in the success of his brand. And those philosophies are, one, ink needs to last forever, and two, fountain pens should be affordable and accessible to everyone from young people to students to artists, all the way to professional adults. The brand was established in the year 2004. Since then, the former accountant turned chemist has made a slew of inks that are proudly made in the US from cap to bottle to ink. Not only are they made in the USA, the inks are all made by good old Nate himself. But that's not all. Nate bottles and labels them all by himself. That's a lot of work that he takes pride in. I personally can say that if there's anything that I can offload onto someone else to save me time to play more video games, for sure, even if it costs me more money, I'm doing it. So I can certainly respect the dedication of the man. Now, as the Noodler's Inc. brand began to make a splash in the industry, Nathan decided to make good on his philosophy of fountain pen affordability. He did this by connecting with Indian fountain pen manufacturers in India to produce pens to his specification. This outsourcing resulted in some of the most inexpensive fountain pens to sport flexible steel nibs to ever hit the market. Also, some of the smelliest pens ever. And some people love it though in the same way some people love the smell of their own farts. In any case, in the year 2019, the brand introduced a new pen, taking after the Neponset Triple Tined Music Nib. Noodler's Inc. released the pen in question today, the Triple Tail. This new pen shares many features with the Neponset, but stands out with its newly redesigned nib and feed fitting. Additionally, unlike previous iterations of Noodler's pens, the Triple Tail does not smell like a butthole. That's all I have for the background information. Moving on to the neutral zone, those elements about the pen that are neither good or bad, or can be good or bad, depending on you. The nib, as shown here, is a three-tine stainless steel nib, proprietary size and made specifically for the Noodler's Inc. brand. Down the middle time is the brand name. The feed is a hand-cut ebonite feed fitted to the contour of the nib. The nib and feed are tension fit into a transparent nib unit housing that can be screwed and unscrewed to reveal an o-ring at the start of the housing threads. The nib unit screws into a concave shaped section that is also transparent. At the top of the section is a metal collar. The section threads are a unified part of the section with two steps of threads. The first is for screwing into the barrel and the second is for screwing the pump converter onto. The pump converter functions a lot like a syringe. Unfortunately, unlike the rest of the pen, whatever it was that the brand did to eliminate the smell of the pen, they didn't do it to the converter as opening up this pen was a lot like opening up a baby's dirty diaper. At the start of the second step of the threads is an O-ring to act as an additional safeguard against ink leaking out of the converter. The rest of the barrel is a classic tapering cigar shaped barrel. On one side of the barrel, the brand name is stamped and on the other, the model name. The end of the pen is rounded like the tip of Nathan's hot dog. 
See what I did there? The cap, like the barrel, is cigar shaped with a rounded finial. The clip is a metal L shaped clip with the brand name down the length of the clip, ending with an oval bulb to assist in clipping. The clip holds a light amount of tension and is just enough to hold on to in a shirt pocket. The center band is a simple thin metal band with the brand name imprinted into it. The pen was packaged in this cardboard box. Included with the box is a black and white printout with information on one side and a drawing on the other. Now understand this, unlike many brands out there, the Noodler's Ink brand pens are made with the intention of user tinkering. The parts are simple and easy enough to figure out when it comes to disassembly, and the same goes for the nib and feed. This can be both good and it can both be bad depending on the user and the level of skill that the user has when it comes to tinkering. It's good if someone likes to tinker, it's bad if they don't. It's good if the pen doesn't write all too well and the user can get it to work, it's bad if they can't get it to work. In the case of this pen, it didn't take much tinkering. All I really had to do was heat set it once. It took all of five minutes and from there it wrote just fine. So why is it here in the neutral? Like I said, this aspect could be good or bad depending on the person using the pen. And their skill level. It's not good that I had to tinker with it at all, and it's good that even if I did have to tinker with it, it works well. This pen is a wet writer, and I'm talking a gusher. It's like writing with an ice cream cone on a hot sidewalk. Then it gets even more wet when you flex the tines for line variation. This is good if you're a lover of line variation and like exposing the shading capabilities of your ink. It's not good if you're looking for a pen that offers a good amount of flex and can be used for practical everyday writing. The line width is about a broad and flexes out to about a double or even triple broad. When it comes to the amount of force needed to get the line variation, I would say it takes enough force that it can cause fatigue for the average writer after a couple minutes of flex writing. I find that overall, this pen is a new and improved version of the Nippon set. That's all I have for the neutral zone. Moving on to the good. Those elements about the pen that are good. Like I said earlier, I think that this pen is a new and improved version of the Nippon set with its redesigned nib and feed. The nib tines are more narrow, thus lending itself to a less pressure required flex pen, as well as an improved feed and modification to provide ink to all three tines. Now, in the writing sample, there were a few instances of the three tines railroading, but as I said, it was only a few. Few enough to say that even the best of flex nibs out there would experience that. So I definitely appreciate the effort and the modifications made to the nib and what they did to make it work better. I also want to point out here in the good that at least with the majority of the pen, the brand managed to get rid of the stink. Again, I can't say the same about the converter, but for the most part, using this pen, unlike other Noodler's pens, doesn't have me constantly looking around the room wondering if one of my cats pooped in the corner. Now, when it comes to build quality, the pen, although feeling very light for its size and girth, feels sturdy and durable. Although not the most scratch resistant material on the planet, it's not bad when it comes to shock resistance. That's all I have for the good. Moving on to the bad. Let's talk coin. This pen is sold here in the US for $55. Now that's not too shabby when you consider that the Nippon set is sold for $75. So basically what you're getting here with the triple tail is a pen with nearly identical measurements as the Nippon set, only with a new and improved nib and feed. What you're losing with the $20 less in cost is the colors and materials offered in the Nippon set. With the triple tail, all you get is the clear vegetal resin. That's it. Oh, and by the way, being that this is a new pen, guess what? It keeps selling out and is hard to get. I'm not talking PlayStation 5 hard, but hard enough. This pen here was provided to me free of charge by my buddies over at Goldspot Pens for review. So guess what? Giveaway contest time! Write in the comments and include your favorite ink color, favorite food, and something nice about Tom over at Goldspot Pen's beard in a cohesive sentence. I will pick a winner and send this pen over to you. But again, it must be a comment in the comment section of this video. It must be one cohesive sentence, including your favorite ink color, favorite food, and something nice about Tom's beard. I think most people know what Tom looks like, but if you don't, you can check out the Goldspot YouTube channel for a reference. Today is the 2nd of February. You have until the end of the 16th to post your comment. I will select a winner on the 17th, the day after the deadline, and post it. You got two weeks. That's all I have for the bad. Moving on to the ugly. Those elements about the pen that should not be, but are. All right, look. If you're familiar with Noodler's brand pens, then you know what you're getting. You're not getting a pen with precision finishing. The parts of the pen are not the highest quality or put together with the most OCD precision. 
It is a pen that is made compensatory to its cost. Everything about the pen is good enough. There's nothing particularly ugly about it other than it is by nature not a thing of beauty. It's sturdy, and depending on the type of user you are, it's a decent enough pen. That's all I have for the ugly. It's high noon. Decision making time. Should you or should you not pull the trigger on the Noodlers Inc. Triple Tail Fountain Pen? Okay, so this is very subjective, more so than I would care to admit, but here goes. If you're an artist and can utilize the function of this pen, whether it's for calligraphy, inking sketches, etc., and you are in need of function and could care less about aesthetics or having a fine writing instrument, then you are the person that I can say would be happy pulling the trigger on this pen. However, if you are a collector or consider aesthetics or are looking for an everyday writer with which to add flair to your diary or journal, I think that it's best to pass on this pen. If you don't believe me and want a chance to win this pen, remember, I'm doing a giveaway. That was my review of the Noodlers Inc. Triple Tail Fountain Pen. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks again for watching. Love you guys. Be well. Be safe.